At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order. I asked if you would, if we would take a moment of silence to pay tribute to Captain Harold Brown, who was the father of our board member, Harold Brown, who passed this morning, and also to lift up Brenda Jones, who's a board member who's in the hospital. So if we could just have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. If you would, please continue to keep them in your thoughts. At this time, we'll have roll call. Carol Brown. Maxine Drew. Present. Janie Humphreys. Present. Linda Jones. Wanda Brown McCage. Present. Stacey Yeager. Present. <laughs> Thank you. We'll now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we need approval of the regular agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded that the agenda be accepted. Question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. At this time, I'd also like to remind everyone about our board norms and protocol. We agreed to respect differences of opinions in making decisions for this district. To follow best practices in managing the superintendent and the management of the board itself to stay on task when conducting business for the district, including while at board meetings, to never surprise the superintendent or each other when conducting official business of the district, to read these norms at the beginning of each board meeting and at board workshops as a reminder of how to conduct our meetings, to continually self-check to determine if we are following our norms when conducting district business. Those are the board norms and protocol. At this time, we'll start with communication from our superintendent, Dr. Charles Fouts. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So the first thing I want to say is that we made it. Hey. <laughs> first school year is under our belt. Woo! We've had some great success points. Um, I have really, really, really enjoyed, and I say it often, I've enjoyed being the superintendent for Kansas City, great. Kansas Public Schools. Um, it has been an honor. Um, Although it went quickly, it has been an honor. I mean, we've done some great work. We have a lot of work to do, and I think we have the right people to help us do it. Um, we are continuously fighting for not only our students, but for our teachers, for our community to be great, and making sure that we have all access, as, all access just as everyone else would have. So I am thankful um, just to be a part. Sweet. I'm a part of the team, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. In terms of communications, I just want to say I enjoyed the honor celebration. I was really proud to be a part of that, and I hope we continue to do that because just from talking to the parents and the students, they were extremely excited about it and enjoyed it and felt so proud, and we need to do more of that, not only for our kids but maybe for our teachers as well. Uh, the district retirement program was excellent, and again, it's always nice to see someone go that full circle to start and to finish, and we have classified and certified staff who've gone beyond the call of duty to make our district what it is today, and they should be commended. I attended Wyandotte and Sumner's graduation. Again, that too is a good feeling. It takes you back. And, and you think about when we were graduating. So we've come a long way, and our young people endure a lot. And the fact that they hung in there and they, they stuck it out, and their parents and family and everyone stayed with them, that's a blessing, and, and just felt really good about that. Mm -hmm. Other board members? Okay, just like to say that um, I attended graduation services as well, and as one of the newer board members, I went last year for the purpose 
of what was assigned to me. But this year, I felt a spirit within to attend those even though I was not assigned. And I did go to a couple that were uh, outside of what I had to do. And I was really impressed with seeing the spirit among the parents and the students and the community at large of being there. I had the privilege on May 17th, after teaching there for 33 years, to be the guest speaker for the last eighth grade graduation at West Middle School. And it was a pleasure for me to be there to encourage them to uh, take themselves a little bit higher by entering into high school. Uh, I'm just pleased that I'm a part of this school board and I feel the spirit that's within to, of our change and the positiveness that's going on within the district. And I'm looking forward for even greater things next year. Like uh, Ms. Page said, the retirement celebration was so much fun to see the people that you've worked with or you've associated with the last few years. Um, I made it to all but the Gateway to College graduation. And like, like you said, Maxine, it's just wonderful to see the community support our kids have. Memorial Hall was full. Yes. Schlegel Auditorium was full for 500 Reach and for Fairfax. I mean, we had quite a few people there for the uh, Bridges graduation. It's all of our kids have their own path, and to see our community coming out and supporting them is wonderful. It's great. Do Dr. Yeager? And I, too, attended um, graduation ceremonies. It was great to see the community, parents, guardians, um, everyone in our community supporting our students who are graduating. And I really um, enjoyed seeing the, hearing the commencement speeches from the students, as well as I was able to speak um, as, at Schlegel's graduation, and I spoke to the seniors prior to them graduating, just to build that relationship as a school board member, to build that connection, to let them know that if any time they have questions or thoughts about their experience in high school, they can come back and give us feedback. But I'm really excited that the community um, and parents and guardians, we're all working together for the same goal. And that is to get our students um, to the higher level of education and the standards that we all strive for, uh, for them to see. So it was really exciting um, during the last week. Okay, thank you, Dr. Yeager. Thank you. Now we'll go to our consent agenda. Move to approve. Second it. It's been moved to approve. It's been second. Question? All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Now we move on to the payment of bills. I move we pay our bills. Second it. It's been moved that we pay our bills and second. At this time, any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Our bills have been paid. Now we come to our community <clears throat> comment, and we should have uh, Pastor Robeson. His topic is KC United upcoming camp. Is he here at this time? Okay. And we go to board updates. We'll, okay, we'll come back to him and we'll go to board updates. Our library updates from Chief Billy Friend of the, the Wyandotte Nation from Oklahoma. Evening, Madam Chair, board, Dr. Okay. Faust. Um, I would like to introduce you to uh, Will Anderson with uh, BHC Rhodes Civil Engineering and Chief Bully Friend of the Wyandotte Nation, and they'll share with you a proposed um, building of a fence or wall between the library and the Huron Cemetery. Chief. So, good day. Okay, I'm Will Anderson from BHC Rhodes. Um, Chief Billy Friend, I'll get him up to talk as well. Um, currently, uh, the Chief will elaborate more on it, but it is the, uh, the slope between the current Kansas City, Kansas Public Library and the actual Huron Cemetery. 
Um, what we're seeing is that there's erosion on the slope um, and also in terms of the silt coming down onto the sidewalk, the, under the landmark status, the nation has to provide protection and security and maintain the cemetery. Um, to do that, what they're aiming to do is to uh, retain that slope um, with a wall and a security type fence on top of the wall. Um, so the, they're constructing the, the aim would be to construct a wall. The issue basically comes the wall we, we would propose is very similar to the wall that's currently at the transit centre, be the same sort of wall, same sort of fence so it matches the whole way round. Um, that's the wall at the transit centre. We met on site, USD 500, uh, Carol and uh, Mr Clemens, and pointed out, talked about the erosion of the slope, in, including the impact of the graves. At the moment, just to go on the impact of the graves, um, there is evidence that um, the, the graves are lifting or the skeletons are starting to show, so we're trying to recover that. Um, there's silt across, as, as the erosion occurs, there's silt across the sidewalk and that continues to, to go, and I imagine with this current wet weather, it's uh, fairly prevalent. So we're dealing with that. And the, then obviously the, the big thing for the landmark status is really that access to and from the cemetery. And to, to maintain that protection, what the Wyandotte Nation is aiming to do is to limit the access to the cemetery to just one location, one gate. And that would be on the 7th Street trafficway side where they currently have the major entrance. Mm -hmm. You would no longer have entrance up the, um, the ramp that's currently in disrepair or the stairs at the southern end of that slope, which are also in disrepair. They would come out. Um, you can see that's the slope we're talking about, looking two ways. Uh, you've got it in your handout, the best I can do it. Um, you've got, and then you can see this is the, um, the stairway at the southern end and largely it's fallen into disrepair. And then at the other end you've got the access going up. Um, the Why Not Nation's concerned about the effects of the erosion to the point where the, it may expose some of the grave sites. There would be a need to deal with the trees. It's, it's well timbered and they're all good solid trees, but if the trees were to be removed, we're concerned about what that may do to the existing graves on the site. Um, so in, in essence, we're trying to retain the trees as much as we can. Um, and so we're at the meeting tonight really just to put forward an option to build the wall, the location of the wall. Um, and we've gone out and done the survey, and so we know where the boundary is. We know the, the status of the slope and the, the uh, slope itself. So, and we've had a tentative, is it feasible to build the retaining wall there and where would we build it? Um, so currently that's where we're suggesting that there would be a sidewalk, there'd be a, a gardened area or a landscaped area and then the wall with the fence on top of it. That would allow us to bring the wall up not, and retain it without removing the trees that are currently there. Uh, there would be lighting, um, as, as there is now, but working lighting. Um, so you've got that stop erosion, eliminate the silt issue and control access to the cemetery. This is, would be just one part of it. The, the actual wall and fence would begin at the uh, current 7th Street Casino. They've got a large retaining wall there. It would link into that, then head head north, it would mean that the current, uh, the stairs that are in disrepair as well as the ramp at the north end would be removed and then the wall would actually turn around onto Minnesota Avenue. But basically that should end up stopping the erosion, limit the silt issue, um, landscape, a, a nice wall and fence there. It would also mean that um, the area where the um, ramp up is in USD 500 country now, or land ownership now. So that would also turn into effectively more usable land for USD 500 because it would be flattened out. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm trying to work out the sales pitch to you in terms of moving forward with this, but uh, effectively it's a better solution. In terms of making it happen, uh, we would need some documentary control because the land that the slope is on, the land that the ramp is on, the land that the stairs are on are all currently under USD 500 ownership. The, the boundary for the land is effectively the top of the slope. Okay, So what we would try to be doing is to get the documentary evidence in there like a, an easement between USD 500 and the nation to affect that and then um, deal with that. Um, the, in terms of don't want to see that. In terms of um, the cost and that, the nation is coming forward to cover those costs. So effectively the, the component that we would like to see from USD 500 is the agreement on the document, uh, which would be basically a, an easement document that would allow for the maintenance and the building of the wall to be uh, foot the bill in terms by the Wyandotte Nation. Okay. Um, I'll let Chief come up and. I say kwe mataru hamindadura azache, wandak kwaiche tijbe, and hello my friends. Hamindadura is who I am, Wyandotte is who we are, and tijbe simply means thank you for allowing us uh, to, to share with you tonight. Uh, just a few things. The Huron Cemetery, of course, uh, the Wyandots, we were the last tribe to leave Ohio uh, during the Indian Removal Act. We arrived on July 28, 1843, uh, down on the Missouri River and the Kaw River on the confluence there. Uh, we were promised 148,000 acres. When we arrived, there was no land there. It had already been taken. And uh, we lost 100 tribal citizens the first winter. Uh, that we were here, and we buried them here in the Huron Cemetery. Uh, the land was given to us by the Delaware uh, tribe at that time, and eventually we negotiated uh, a deal that we purchased 36 tracts of land. We were gifted three tracts of land by the Delaware tribe, uh, which became most of Wyandotte County. And, uh, and so the Huron Cemetery uh, has been held in trust by the federal government for the Wyandotte Nation. Uh, our tribe was relocated to Indian Country in 1867, and uh, this Huron Cemetery has always been held in trust by the federal government for the benefit of the Wyandotte Indians. And so, uh, you know, our purpose, uh, we fought very hard to get National Historic Landmark status. We were granted National Historic Landmark status by the Department of Interior through the National Park Service in 2017. And part of that application, uh, we assured them uh, that we would build uh, something, a fence uh, something to protect and do away with the erosion that Will had talked about. Uh, but we've had vandalism throughout the years in this cemetery, uh, all the way down to where they've even stolen the brass nameplates off, uh, off of the graves themselves. Uh, just this past year, we've had two headstones broken, uh, you know, and most of these headstones are started in the 1840s. Uh, there's also uh, at least 100 or more Union soldiers that were buried uh, in this cemetery and unmarked graves. And so there's a lot of history here. And uh, the purpose of the fence is to maintain the integrity and to protect, uh, to protect the cemetery by limiting one entrance in, one entrance out, and, uh, and uh, for, you know, to be able to further, uh, the, to be able to keep an eye on it better and to protect the, the cemetery, to protect the graves of our ancestors. And so uh, we would appreciate uh, your help. We'd appreciate anything that you could do uh, to help us on this easement. And as Will said, it, there's a lot, a lot of erosion that's taking place on this hillside, as you're looking at here. And, uh, and part of this purpose of this fence would to prevent that. We would also be able to put some French drains in and uh, drain the water out uh, better uh, to keep the sidewalk maintained as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we are open to any questions and um, looking to the next step if we can. Okay. I'd just like to say that uh, as a born and raised child here in Kansas City, Kansas, I know that that area has always been sacred among uh, people here in the city, and hopefully we can 
accommodate you according to what you want us to do. At this point, we're going to ask if you all could meet with the attorney and, and work things out and see you've kind of gone through what you're going to do and what you'd like from us. And I don't know, legally, I want we want to make sure we do things decent and in order. Correct. And like Ms. Drew, we're both social studies teachers, and yes. we've studied a lot and focused on that area, and we have a lot of respect, and, and we want to make sure we do things decent and in order. So if it's okay, if we could have you meet with our attorney and then work out what needs to be worked out and then come back and bring it to the board and we can make it official Great. after everything has been worked out. Okay. Is that? Will okay. the meeting be now or? No. Yes. No. Something. Yeah. <laughs> well, not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And again, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Robeson is here. If you would come up, please. Good evening. Good evening. I apologize for being late. We left a meeting to come to a meeting, so now we're here, and so I'm going to. Uh, attempt to log in and give you our presentation. Um, we're using this new uh, software that allows us to go 3D uh, with our PowerPoint versus 2D. So um, just a moment, I'll get this up. exactly why that's not working, but I'm going to go ahead and do this anyway. Is that okay? okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for allowing us to come out today. My name is Adrian Robertson, and I am the CEO and co-founder of KC United Youth Sports and Education Initiative, and we have since changed our name to KC United Youth and Family Sports and Education Initiative. Uh, today I have with me, we have Mr. Paul Jones, who is also a, uh, a dot, uh, graduate of Wyandotte High School. Yeah, go Bulldogs. And uh, I'm also a graduate of Wyandotte High School. And then we also have a couple of our board members that are coming as well. But we just wanted to give you guys an update as to what's going on with KC United. And for those of you who don't know, this is our 10th year. We're celebrating our 10th year of service to this community. And we're really excited about all that we've been able to do. We started in 2009 just providing uh, what we thought would just be community, uh, an outlet for kids to play competitive youth football and cheer. Uh, in 2016, Ms. Marianne Flunder uh, pulled us to the side and took us out to Lacine, Kansas, and she introduced me to, she said, I had some kids doing STEM, and I said, what is that? I thought she was talking about a plant. <laughs> but we ended up going out to Lacine, Kansas, and we saw this multitude of kids from the urban core on ropes and doing all this amazing work with science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And so what she was wanting was, was more boys to be engaged, of which 92% of our football league were boys. Well, as we were in the process of putting all this together, unfortunately what happened was she passed in March of 2016. So we took on the STEAM camp in memoriam to Miss Flunder. So from 2016 to now, the statistics I was going to show you was in 2016 we had six middle school boys. Uh, 2017 we had 29, we'd included girls and middle school boys, and last year we had 176 students 
because we were partnering with KCKCC Kids on Campus. And uh, our data shows that 82% of our kids who participate in our summer STEAM camp grades increased by one point, which means that they went from a B and went to an A. If it went from a D, it went to a C. Uh, their BMI index decreased 18%, which means their body mass increased, decreased due to the, uh, uh, the component that we have with the athletics that we provide with it and the physical component. And so this year, we are honored to be at Sumner Academy, and I think we got it. Is this, you got it there for me, sir? I just need to hit enter, right? Yeah. Two arrows. Two arrows. Two arrows. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. There you go. So, thank you, sir. Uh, our purpose, as you see, is to strengthen our city and our, uh, our unify our city, one soul, one life, one family at a time. And then as we go through these, you will see that, if it comes out right, it will give us some background on our focus. And our key is to focus on the family. That's why we do what we do. We have found through data that we took, that we uh, derived from the local schools, that kids love sports and the arts. So sports and the arts allows us to get a foot in the door. And so our mission is to exceed the needs of the whole family, spiritually, educationally, economically, socially, emotionally, and physically through highly effective and highly uniquely developed year-round after-school programs and services that will meet each individual where they are to get them where they desire to be to get them to go to thriving, not just surviving. Mm -hmm. So our impact is to literally and tangibly see the urban core of our city stronger because there are stronger families and systems that support them, enabling them to continually gain more strength while negatively impacting their neighbors, while positively impacting their neighbors and their community. And as you can see there, that's, that's three phases of what we do. The parents that you see at top, are part of our game changers component because we believe the parents are the game changers of the family. The group that you see there, we had nine graduates, uh, two of which have, have moved out of HUD housing. One bought her a house, which she shouldn't have bought, but it's a whole different conversation, <laughs> but she bought her a house. She's also started her own business, and we've also got a young lady there that is now our administrative assistant who is now, again, moving from Section 8 into a, mo a mindset of not just uh, renting but owning. The, the, in the middle you see our summer camp participants last year who partnered with Thrive and also with CHC and they did a mural down on uh, uh, the walkway down off Jersey Creek and then you see the Chiefs cheerleaders there supporting our football league which they've been there for the last 10 years as well. So how do we measure our success? I don't know, I'm not going to go through all that but some of you know that guy in the back right there that's Mr. Uh, 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 what's his name? He plays for the Chiefs. Uh, uh, really? Y'all gonna do me like that? Really? Oh. Really? Oh. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes, right? <laughs> I forgot what city I was in there for a minute. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, uh, our league got chosen by Dick Sporting Goods to come out last year. And so 15 of our kids who play in our league, all of them from three, three quarters of them uh, from KCK, got a, a $225 gift card to shop at Dick's. And then all of a sudden, Patrick Mahomes showed up, and then he took the kids on a buying spree, and then they donated $5,000 to uh, KC United. Mm -hmm. Also with that, we have now entered into a full-year partnership with Dick Sporting Goods, which means the teams that are a part of KC United, KCK, and Kansas City, Missouri, what we call the miscellaneous items that the coaches had to pay almost $750 for is now free through Dick Sporting Goods. Good. These are some of the people who make up uh, the core of our team. Everyone that you see there is a dot, well, except for Will Shoes. Other than that, everyone there is from Wyandotte County. None of them are paid, and they've been with us for a majority of the 10 years that we've been, in, uh, we've been around. We use our leadership principles. I am honored to work for the Kansas Leadership Center in Wichita, Kansas. I'm one of the facilitators there. And so one of the things that we train our staff and what we train our coaches is, is how to think adaptively, how to think differently through different types of challenges. And so we look at it through four competencies there, um, and they have been really open to learning different ways of teaching their kids. Our vision is to break the poverty mindset systems in children, youth, and families in Kansas City. Notice the phrase is breaking the poverty mindset system that our kids, youth, and families in Kansas City currently have. We base everything that we do on the framework of the HEAT report, which, was the, which we got through the Kerwin Institute and also through the Community Health Coalition. 
So everything is framed around the health equity act, uh, action transformation. We use data, which we get from the Wyandotte County Community Health Assessment. And as we can see here in 2017, Wyandotte County is still struggling to come out of one of the worst, healthiest counties in the state. Um, so our theme is dream big. That's our theme for the summer. That's our theme. And then we also, we believe that uh, it's going to take someone bigger than us to go to the heart of what people are needing. And so our program is framed around the, the gospel. It's about showing people Christ, not preaching to them, but showing them Christ, living it around it, around them. Uh, so this is our 10th year celebration. You see our brand new banner there. That's our brand new logo, uh, focusing on sports, uh, math, the arts, and primarily bringing it back to the community. So this is what we do. We do football, competitive youth football and cheer. Some of our key results tell you that in, 20, in 2009, we had over 2,000 participants. 2015, 400 participants. Last year, we had over 550 participants with a 20% increase in our cheer squads, especially when we found out you could get scholarships for cheerleading. Mm -hmm. This is our STEAM camp. Again, we support, we, we're supporting uh, all the work that Ms. Mary Ann Flunder did. Our kids every week uh, went on a field trip to where it supported every one of the STEM, STEAM competencies. And then at the end, we provided a full banquet and dance with the kids. And this is game changers. These are the parents of the kids who go through the STEAM camp and the sports league. And as you can see, we had uh, some wonderful people who came in and got them engaged in working with the community, got them engaged in cooking healthy for their kids. And then, like I said, getting them to change from the poverty mindset that what really is abnormal can be normal. So five areas of holistic health impact, spiritual, physical, educational, social, emotional, and economical. Some of our achievements, and we're really excited about this. Uh, my wife and I and KC United, we received the 2016 Soul of the City Award. Some of you know that we have a field named after us down on 9th Street. And this year, we were chosen, KC United was chosen to receive the Governor's Health Award uh, for the state of Kansas. We were also honored to receive a grant from the Chiefs and the uh, and KU Med Center that allows them to bring um, actual uh, what am I thinking about, Paul? They actually bring their trainers to our field. So the trainers that are there for the Chiefs, the Royals, and Sporting KC are actually at our football games for an extra level of security and safety. Here's some of the pictures. As you can see, some of the folks that we've been partnering with uh, throughout the 10 years that we've been there, some of our personal profile. And then coming up as we close, it talks about the three things that are coming up. So we've got three camps coming up that are all free for the community. Uh, Bishop Ward is, is putting on their first annual camp for grades 5th fifth through 8th fifth through grade. That's going to be free at Bishop Ward. And then the KCK PAL, which is a brand new entity through the KCK Police Department, is sponsoring a camp with Mr. Will Shields in partnership with us. And then again, Daryl Stuckey is coming back for his 8th Wyandotte County free football camp. And he is now retired, but he is now actively engaged with us in bringing more resources to Kansas City. Okay. Our next phase is we want to be more intently uh, focused on community development by developing collaborative partnerships for participants. And this is where we're now talking about our 2019 Mary Ann Flunder Summer STEAM Sports and Arts Camp. These are just some of our partners this year, Thrive, Young Women on the Move, USC, Kids on Campus. Paula is a new uh, sports and physical activity that is driven by the president. This is a part of our uh, physical activities that the kids are going to be engaged with. Sumner Academy is going to be our home, so we're excited about that, that we're going to be in Sumner Academy. And then also we're using an a, a evidence-based, uh, age-based program called Seeing Yourself in Science. And we're really excited about that. And so like I said, this is, we're going to be offering free transportation, age-based uh, social-emotional learning, age-based uh, adaptive leadership training, age-based uh, critical thinking skills, uh, everything from critical thinking to decision making, but then also entrepreneurship. We want our kids to start thinking next level, even from K through eighth grade. And then finally, we're talking about seeing yourself in science and seeing yourself with our STEM training. The, re the reason I was late is we have been asked by KU Med Center to be a part of a two-year grant 
where they want to focus on 136 through 8th grade students, primarily to help get them engaged in after school sports. It was literally like just laid in our lap. And so with that, these, these are the entities that we have partnering with us to do this. We have the KC Cheetahs, which is a boxing a track club, which Coach Monroe has been doing out here uh, at JUCO for over 30 years. He works with over 150 students. Mr. Marlon Nevels, boxing, community boxing and fitness center. They work with about 50 youth. The Showtime Basketball and Rebels Basketball, they work with about 70 youth. Mr. Michael Gonzalez works with Piper Soccer Club. They're looking at over 100 middle schoolers, and we work with over 225 students in KC United alone, with the emphasis being at-risk kids and girls. So for the next two years, we're working on a $90,000 grant that's going to get our kids more actively engaged in after-school athletics. And this is the reason why we have really been uh, working to work with the school district to be able to have access to resources uh, to work with you because those kids will be coming straight into your sports programs. Uh, we had a chance to go to a national conference in Florida where the high schools look at programs like what we do as feeder systems. And so along with those feeder systems, that's exactly what we want to do. When we were coming up, and I'm going to close with this, there was a time you couldn't go to a game at Wyandotte and get there at 5 o'clock. You were already late. Right? If Wanda was playing Sumner or if Wanda was playing anybody else, you were late if you didn't get to the JV game. We went to a Wanda game this year. You could have put the people on one side, on the other side, and get maybe one quarter of the pit filled if you know anything about Wanda High School. Our goal is to change that around, is to get sports to become a community event like it used to be when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. Lastly, and I promise this, I'm a pastor, so this is my last thing, I promise. <laughs> Every one of our students will be receiving private college scholarships this summer. That's great. And that's a part of the ACES Nation program that we're out of, out, of, out of town. So, again, that's what we're doing. We just wanted to give you guys an update on what we're, been, what we're doing. We're proud to be here. We're honored to be here. We're DOTS. You know, we're District 500 kids. And so we just want, want to thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you, Dr. Faust. And thank you all for all for what you're doing. And we're here with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, I, I, I have a question. You, you mentioned the program at Sumner. Is all of that clear in terms of being able to utilize the facilities? Yes, we, we, got, we found out today that Sumner will be open for the summer. Uh, Ty let me know today that we will have access to Sumner, so we're good to go. Yes, ma'am. All right. Just wanted to make sure we were clear. Okay. That's my understanding. We have okay. access to some of this summer. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. Before you sit down, I'd just like to say I've never heard of this program, but after listening to you, I am greatly impressed with what you're doing, going back into the neighborhood where these kids are because – the foundation that we got was from family. Yes, ma'am. And so it's very important that it is put in them. And I like the idea that not only are you focusing on the kids, but the adults as well. And that's a very positive thing. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. At this time, we'll go to our bond updates. Madam Chair, Board, Superintendent, school is over. <laughs> Let the hammering begin. <laughs> we have a lot of projects to be done this summer, and uh, Lee's here from Jay Dunn to give us an update. All right. All right. Good evening, Board. Dr. Good evening. Faust. Good evening. Uh, Lee Moore here. Just uh, want to start with the. Am I supposed to run this? I go for okay sorry okay so um, we'll start uh, updating 
uh, John Fisk here. Um, so the pretty picture there is just the electrical panel. We had some major electrical work that we finished up. So the second page has some other um, good pictures. But basically, we're in the addition. Uh, we're focusing on uh, finishes right now. And uh, kitchen equipment will be coming in in a couple weeks uh, for that project. Let's see. Scroll down. OK, should be two pages. So. Uh, the next one up is Glory Willis. Uh, that one, um, we're putting the finishing touches on. Uh, got a lot of finishes going. Actually just got the gym floor completed. That The doors were locked when I went up there uh, this afternoon. So no nobody on the gym floor until like June 1st. So uh, looking really good. Um, we're starting architect punch list. Uh, and then we're also preparing Coronado uh, to get ready to be demolished. And then we've got a significant amount of site work. Uh, so we're looking for some dry weather, if you guys got any. So. <laughs> when it comes. Well. Um, so speaking of weather, Carl B. Bruce, so that's uh, middle school. We've got uh, under construction. You see a bunch of pictures of dirt there. Uh, we do have some footings poured. Uh, we are still being impacted by the weather. Um, forecast is looking good the rest of this week. So hopefully we'll keep putting some footings in the ground. A uh, couple milestones coming up on that project. Uh, structural precast is actually done. That's the precast for the gymnasium, the storm shelter. That's complete in Marshall, Missouri, and hopefully by the end of June we'll be setting that. So start seeing a little bit of vertical construction there on that project. Um, next one is Rosedale. Uh, so we're doing a cafeteria and kitchen addition there. Uh, you can see the exterior skin. We're pretty well buttoned up. We do have some architectural features. Uh, uh, still to install, and those are in transit right now. Um, so that'll button up the exterior. Again, we're prepping interior of Rosedale to do some renovation work for the summer. We're also gearing up. Uh, we have some parking lot and some drives to put around that new addition. So we're uh, going to be focusing on that over the next couple months. Uh, otherwise, uh, finishes go. Um, we have kitchen equipment actually arrived tonight, so that installation will start tomorrow. So uh, we're painting and putting flooring in in that in that addition there. Um, one project I don't have pictures on, but I wanted to mention, it was Wellborn Elementary. So uh, well, there, was, there was no new pictures to share. Uh, the building's pretty well complete. Uh, but again, we are prepping the two existing buildings to get ready for demolition. You're going to see a lot of, of a lot of demolition and uh, site work going on over the next couple months. So um, there's also, there should be an updated uh, financial in there. There's really no changes to that other than just the completion of the total bond. And to throw out some figures, uh, we've put in place about $85 million of work uh, for the total bond. That's construction uh, dollars, which is about 47%. So we're going to be hitting over that 50% mark here next month, uh, this summer. Um, and um, as Dennis mentioned, um, we've got another uh, nine renovations that we're starting probably today. was the, was our first real day of, of work. And again, getting through um, that and getting going. So. That's all I've got, unless there's any questions. Not at all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sometime mid-June, I will try to get on y'all's calendar so we can do a walk through with Gloria Willis yes. and Wellborn before traffic hit it so you all can see it in Christine's uh, condition. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. What's the superintendent? <laughs> um, I'd ask that the Kansas City Board of Education accept the first read proposed changes to board policies for the KCK Public Libraries as submitted by Carol Leavers, Director of Libraries, and as recommended by myself, Charles Fowl, Superintendent of Schools. Again, evening board. Um, Good evening. Right in front of you is the first read. Uh, review for KCK PL policy to bring it in line with district policies. So if there's any questions, any additions, uh, just let us know. We'll be working on that and get it done. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thanks. I'd ask that the Kansas City Board of Education approve the renewal of the memorandum of understanding with jobs for America's graduates Kansas JAG K, as submitted by Alan King, Interim Assistant Superintendent, and as recommended by myself, Superintendent of Schools. 
Good evening, Board. Good evening. Good evening. This is, as Dr. Faust said, this is a renewal of the Jobs for America's Graduates program that we've been having. In our four high schools, we have two programs in each of the four comprehensive high schools. Mm -hmm. To varied success, um, we've talked with them about maybe we need to just limit to the schools where it actually is being truly successful. What it is is uh, 15 students in a class who are identified as needing a little extra push uh, to make sure that they're uh, going to be successful in life. And so there's a JAG coach who, stay, who is housed at the buildings, works with the kids. They have competencies that they, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that they will take the kids through. Competencies can be things such as job attainment competencies, like constructing a resume or a job re or a job search, job survival competencies, like appropriate dress, identifying the problems with new employers, demonstrating time management. I'm just giving a, you know, a few examples of them plus personal skills competencies such as being able to explain or demonstrate maturity, base decisions on values and goals, and identify the process of decision making. Those are all things that they get within that JAG class. What's unique about this program is there are 10 hours of community service involved, and it's not the traditional community service. It's actually job embedded community service. So they wouldn't be going out picking up trash. They may go out and work for a uh, nonprofit mm -hmm. for part of it. So that's what part of the work is. And in addition, then, this group also then stays with those students a year after they've graduated, meeting with them once a month, meeting with their employers, making sure that they continue to be successful. So this is a program we've had. Um, I can't say for sure. We've had it for at least two years. And um, we're just asking for the renewal of it. Is it possible to get some data to show you said you you track them? Can mm -hmm. we see some things we like ask, how we they're can doing? Ask for them. We'll be happy to bring that to you. So are you going to be re-evaluating each location this year to see where it's most effective? And then uh, next year we may have different areas to yes. look at. And what's the total cost for us on this? Uh, total cost is, if the full embedded program, I believe, is $52,000. Okay. It's $6,500 a program. Program. So who pays for the uh, career specialist? JAG does? JAG. Mm -hmm. Okay. And 15 students per class. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was a yeah. seventy-five thousand. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, doc, Mr. Kevin didn't remind want me to remind you that the our cost is six five hundred dollars. The cost of one program is seventy-five thousand. Mm -hmm. So they're paying they're paying all that part of it. We're just paying a small fee of it. Thank thank you, Mr. Covington. Okay. Can we get a motion from the floor? So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly second that we renew the Jobs for America Youth Kansas program. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. So moved. Thank you, Thank Board. You. Thank you. Okay, now we come to board discussion. Our board agenda timeline. Okay, we'll go to the calendar and Okay, May 30th, we have uh, the Hispanic Development Fund Scholarship Award Ceremony at 6 p.m. at UNKC. Our next board meeting will be June the 11th. 
the Foundation Golf Tournament. I don't see a time. It's June 12th. All day. Oh, okay. <laughs> all day total. <laughs> okay, so all you Tiger Woods out there, <laughs> let's get it done. Okay. Uh, our last meeting in June will be the 25th. And I think we got it done. The young lady in the restroom told me we weren't going to do it. We did it. It did. <laughs> All minds are clear. Can we get a motion to end the meeting? So moved. <laughs> second. It's been moved and properly second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Thank Aye. you so much. We appreciate everybody coming out.